recruiting rankings more often than not they're correct and they're on the money but sometimes they miss so bad that you just have to look back and laugh and the 2016 quarterback class is the perfect example of this you're just gonna have to watch the full video to understand today i'm gonna look at who we thought was gonna be the future of college football and take over the game at the next level for years to come the top 10 quarterbacks from 2016 where are they now? If you don't know who I am, I'm Saturday Shenanigans and I post amazing college football content all off season long. Feel free to subscribe so you never miss out on another upload. The 10th best quarterback from the class of 2016 was a guy named Jack Allison. He was coming out of the state of Florida. He was a four-star recruit according to 24-7 Sports, the 13th ranked pro style QB in the country and number 37 overall in Florida. He was a big boy, six foot five, long arms, big hands. He pretty much had offers to all of the SEC and ACC schools, but he eventually committed to the Miami Hurricanes. It didn't work out for Allison at Miami. He redshirted in the 2016 season. Then in the 2017 season, he didn't get a single snap, so he decided to transfer to West Virginia before 2018. That year, he played four games in garbage time with minimal attempts, but then in the bowl game, he got significant time but did not make the most of it. He went 17 of 35 with no touchdowns and an interception in a loss to Syracuse in the Camping World Bowl. In 2019, he got one one start against Iowa State. He played a lot better, 18 of 24 with one touchdown and one interception, but this is the last time that he would ever see the field with the Mountaineers. The sad truth was that Jack wasn't good enough to play at a Division I Power 5 level, so after 2019, he transferred to West Liberty College in West Virginia, a Division II school where he started four games in the next season, but again, didn't put up great numbers, and his college career was over. Number nine, Brandon McElwain, a four-star dual threat quarterback out of the state of Pennsylvania. He was number two in the country as a dual, number three player overall in the state. He was six foot, 200 pounds, super athletic, and he signed with the South Carolina Gamecocks. He actually did play his freshman season. He popped in a few games as a reserve. He went 62 of 118, which is a 52% completion percentage. Not great. He got sacked a few times. However, he did rush on the ground for 127 yards. He decided to transfer all the way across the country and play for the Cal Golden Bears in the spring of 2017, but he did redshirt that very next year, so he wasn't actually playing on the field till 2018. He primarily played backup for Cal as a Wildcat-like quarterback who would be thrown in there late in the game, but when he did pass, it was atrocious. Two touchdowns to eight interceptions on the season on 129 attempts, not good at all. But as I said, the rushing was there. He had 80 attempts, 402 yards, which was five yards a carry, along with four touchdowns. He called it a quit for his football career, but this guy was a dog on the baseball diamond as an outfielder. He played for Cal, did amazing. He ended up getting drafted to the MLB, and today in 2024, he's playing for the New York Mets AA affiliate, and he's trying to work his way up to the big leagues. At number eight, finally a name we could recognize for his play on the field, but it ended in a tragic death. Dwayne Haskins was a four-star recruit out of the state of Maryland. He was the number five pro-style quarterback in the class of 2016, the number two overall player in Maryland, and a lot of people thought he was actually going to commit to the Maryland Terps and maybe the Florida Gators. However, he went with Ohio State. As we know, the Ohio State quarterback room was loaded in the mid-2010s. In 2016, Dwayne Haskins sat. Then in 2017, he got limited time, coming in in garbage time, throwing at the end of the game. He looked superb but 2018 was his breakout year. He is someone on this list that definitely lived up to the hype. He threw for 54 touchdowns to only nine interceptions on 70% completion percentage. What a wonderful season. He was a Heisman Trophy finalist. He was drafted to the Washington football team 15th overall in the 2019 draft. In that season, he started seven games with his team going two and five. He did not play great, seven touchdowns to seven interceptions. He was looking for more in the 2020 season, but his team went one and five in six of his starts with five touchdowns and seven interceptions. He signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers in January of 2021, and he was the third string quarterback, so he did not play that year. But unfortunately, he never got a shot to play again because in April of 2022, he was struck by a dump truck on the highway and died. Rest in peace, Dwayne Haskins. Coming in at number seven, we have Jared Garantano, 
four-star recruit, number four rated dual threat in the country, number three in the state of New Jersey, and he committed to the Tennessee Volunteers. After redshirting the 2016 season, he started six games in 2017, going 86 of 139, which is a 61.9 completion percentage with four touchdowns to only two interceptions. Then in 2018 and 2019, he took over the reins as full-time starting quarterback for the Vols. In 18, he threw for 12 touchdowns to three interceptions, and 19, he threw for 16 touchdowns and eight interceptions. He was a solid college quarterback. But then we saw his play in time dwindle in the 2020 season, and he entered the transfer portal for 2021. But luckily, he still got a chance at the next level. He signed an undrafted free agent contract with the Arizona Cardinals in in 2022 then in 2023 he signed with the Denver Broncos and now today he's playing on the Houston Roughnecks of the USFL at number six on the list Brandon Peters he was also a four-star recruit but he was 97 overall so now we're getting to the guys who are supposed to be really good he was a pro style QB number three in the nation and the number one player in the state of Indiana he redshirted in 2016 but he saw his main opportunity in 2017 he was a backup but due to injuries in October he got to come into a game against Rutgers, led three straight scoring drives, and they won the game. Then after that, he started the next three games with wins against Minnesota and Maryland. He also started in the bowl game to finish that season, but when it came to 2018, he was the third string. Overall at Michigan, he only had a 51% completion percentage with four touchdowns to three interceptions, not great, so he decided to transfer before the start of the 2019 season. He got the job for the Illini in 2019, but yet again, his numbers weren't amazing. 55.3 completion percentage with 18 touchdowns to 8 interceptions. In the COVID shortened 2020 year, he missed some time, only played 5 games. Then in 2021, his final season in college, he went 91 of 169, which is a 53% completion percentage with only 7 touchdowns and 4 interceptions, and his college career was over. In 2022, he signed with the Los Angeles Chargers as an undrafted free agent, and he was waived just a couple months later, and he officially retired from football. I found him on LinkedIn, and today he's a private wealth advisor trying to help athletes score their entrepreneurial, business, and financial goals. Number 5, Felipe Franks, 4-star recruit pro-style quarterback, the number 9th ranked player in the entire state of Florida, and he decided to stay home when he committed to the Florida Gators. The story of Felipe Franks is an interesting one because unlike many people on this list, he actually had a lot of points of success on the field. In 2016, he redshirted. Then in 2017, he played in 11 games. Not amazing numbers, 9 touchdowns to 8 interceptions, 54.6 completion percentage. However, he was super young and showed a lot of upside. In 2018, he immensely improved throwing 24 touchdowns to 6 interceptions, and this was the guy that they thought he would be all along. However, in 2019, in only the 4th game of the season, he was carted off the field with an apparent knee injury. He missed the rest of the season, and that was his time at Florida. He was done. He announced that he would be transferring shortly after that. He decided to stay in the conference and committed to the Arkansas Razorbacks for the 2020 season and had an awesome year. 17 touchdowns, 4 interceptions on 68% completion. But the main problem was was that his skill set didn't match up with NFL scouts and teams, so on May 3rd of 2021, he signed with the Atlanta Falcons as an undrafted free agent. He made his debut that season, and his very first pro career pass was intercepted. The next year, in 2022, the Falcons decided to move him to tight end during camp. He didn't see the field at all that year, and then in 2023, he was injured and waived by the Falcons. Today, he's no longer playing football, but he's heavily invested into real estate. Number four is an insane story that I bet a lot of you know. It's a quarterback named Malik Murphy. He was a four-star coming out of high school. He was number eight in the state out of California. He was supposed to be the next big thing. He committed to Florida State, but immediately had problems academically and was ineligible to play for the team. So to get his career back on track, in 2017, he joined the Independence Community College football team, as many of you know, the home of the Netflix show Last Chance You. So basically... This guy was a movie star. He did turn things around. Then in 2019, he found himself back at the major Division I FBS level of college football, playing for the Nevada Wolfpack. But he only played in three games, putting up poor performances, one touchdown to four interceptions, and his college career was finished. This did not stop Henry 
from playing the sport that he loved because he continued playing arena football and now he's playing Canadian football here in 2024 so it's actually kind of an awesome story. We are finally in the top three with four star KJ Costello coming out of the state of California the number three ranked pro style QB in the country and number seven overall player in the state of California. This is another one of those cases where this quarterback showed a lot of potential. He committed to Stanford, he redshirted in the 2016 season, then in 2017 he came out, played in 11 games, 14 touchdowns, 4 interceptions, but he really turned it up in the 2018 season, showing that he was one of the best quarterbacks on the West Coast. He put up 29 touchdowns to 11 interceptions, 3,500 yards on a 65.1 completion percentage. Unfortunately, in 2019, he lost his job dealing with some injury issues. He only played in 5 games, 6 touchdowns to 3 interceptions, and it was time for him to move on from the Stanford football program. In 2020, he got to play for the legendary coach Mike Leach, rest in peace to him, for the Mississippi State Bulldogs, and in his first start, he broke the SEC record for most passing yards in a single game with 623, oh yeah. Unfortunately, after that game, he struggled mightily, got injured again, and his college career was done. He still had hopes to play football, so after he went undrafted in 2021, he signed with the LA Chargers, but unfortunately, he got way Waved. Then he signed with the Philadelphia Stars of the USFL, got waived. Then the New Orleans Saints after that, waived immediately. And finally, his last stint in football was again with the Philadelphia Stars, but the league went bankrupt. I'm not quite sure what KJ Costello's up to today, but according to his Instagram and social medias, he's a golf enthusiast, so maybe one day we'll find him on the PGA Tour. At number two, we have a doozy. Five-star Jacob Eason out of the state of Washington. He was rated .9975 according to 24-7 Sports Composite. He was the number nine player in the nation and the number 176 ranked recruit of all time. It seemed like nothing could go wrong. He was 6'5". He had incredible arm talent. He had the second nature ability to be quarterback. He committed to the Georgia Bulldogs but nothing really turned out. Although he didn't earn the starting job coming out of camp as a freshman in 2016, he was immediately thrown in the fire the first game. He quickly took over the starter role. He appeared in all 13 games that season, going 204 of 370, which is a 55% completion percentage, 16 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. Nothing amazing, but solid for a true freshman season. Eason began the 2017 season with high hopes, high expectations, but unfortunately he got injured and his job got stolen by Jake Fromm. After the season concluded, he decided that he was going to transfer to the Washington Huskies. However, this was before the transfer portal existed, so he had to sit out a year. Many speculated that this could have killed his momentum, who knows, but it would have been a lot more interesting if he was playing in the transfer portal era and was able to go to a place and start immediately. Nevertheless, he got the starting job for the 2019 Washington Huskies, played in every single game, and had a great season. 23 touchdowns, 8 interceptions on 64% completion. Although he didn't blow everyone away in college due to his 5-star ranking, his physical tools were definitely there, so he decided to forego his senior season and enter the 2020 NFL Draft. But let's just say he didn't really go high on the board. He was the 122nd overall pick in the fourth round by the Indianapolis Colts. He has bounced around as a backup in his career in the NFL, first with the Colts, then the Seahawks, then the Panthers, 49ers, Panthers again, and finally the New York Giants. In his NFL career, he has 10 total attempts, five completions with no touchdowns and two interceptions. But the good news is he is still on an NFL roster today with the New York Giants. And the number one rated quarterback in the class of 2016 and also the biggest bust, his name is Shea Patterson. Coming out of the state of Florida, he was a five-star recruit, .9981 according to 24-7 Sports, the number one player in the state and number four in the entire country. He had offers from just about every major program in the country. There were some people that thought he was going to go to USC and play in LA, but instead he chose to play with the Ole Miss Rebels. In the 2016 season, surprisingly as a five-star, he did not win the starting role. He was a backup 
but when Chad Kelly went down with the torn ACL, he came in and did his thing. He played in three games, six touchdowns, and three interceptions on 54% completion percentage. Nothing crazy, nothing amazing, but he wasn't horrible. He did lead them to a couple wins. 2017 was a tough year for the Ole Miss Rebels because they were involved with NCAA sanctions and an investigation, but nevertheless, Shea Patterson earned the starting job for that season, and in the first two games of the season, he threw for a combined 918 yards and nine touchdown passes. The whole world was talking about this. He even set the Ole Miss record for passing yards against UT Martin with 489. But in the next five games, Ole Miss lost four of them, with Patterson throwing eight interceptions. And then in mid-October, it was announced that he had a season-ending PCL injury, and 2017 was wiped. Obviously, with the trouble at Ole Miss that season, it was time to go to a program that would better suit him, and before 2018, he had transferred to the Michigan Wolverines. His time in Ann Arbor in 2018 and 2019 garnered a very lukewarm response from fans. Because if you just look on paper, he was a solid quarterback. 22 touchdowns to 7 interceptions in his first year, and 23 touchdowns to 8 interceptions in the next year, but he had so much talent he could have done better, especially in big games like those against Ohio State where he faded. To most other quarterbacks in the sport, this would have been a great career, something to hang your hat on, but when you have the expectations that Shea did, this was nothing. Patterson went from a unanimous future playmaker in the sport to going undrafted in 2020. After the Chiefs waived him in 2021, he played with the BC Lions of the Spring Developmental League. Then he started a career playing in the USFL, then for many different teams, including some from the Canadian Football League. In his entire career playing for both of those leagues, he only started five games throwing four touchdowns and five interceptions. Today, he's still on a roster in the CFL for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. So you might be wondering where the actual elite players were ranked in that class. Jalen Hurts was at 11, and Justin Herbert was 42, and that's it. Literally, no one else became household names. I fondly remember Brandon McIlwain as a Cal fan, and I thought this guy was going to be super good when he transferred over. All he did was run the ball. He could not throw the ball for anything. It was really fun to watch, though. We would put him in in some fun packages, some goal line stuff. He was getting pretty freaky out there. It was just a good time. And of course, Jacob Eason. I remember Husky fans raving about him. He is next up. He's that guy. He's 6'5". His arm strength is insane. And then look what he did. I mean... I mean, come on, man. To be honest, guys, that video, the top 10 stuff, takes a really long time to make. I feel exhausted. Although screen time, it's probably not crazy. It's probably like 12 or 13 minutes for you. It takes me a lot of time on my end, so it would mean a lot if you could like this video, comment, share with friends, help the algorithm so this could get to as many college football fans as possible, and we could grow the best family in college football. That's what I've been about since day one. Thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. I've been Saturday Shenanigans, your home for unfiltered college football content, and I'll see you guys soon.